Hi guys, Buildzoid here, and so uh, yeah, I've had my 3700X for uh, like a day now, and so basically I spent all that time just messing with memory overclocking, not really anything else. I know everybody probably cares more about the idle power states and whatever, but I, I'm not really that in interested in power saving uh, systems in general, but... Anyway, so I've been test uh, messing around with memory overclocking and basically like what what configuration of memory is the best for performance. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and say that you want to run 3800 megahertz dual rank or if possible quad rank. Um, basically more ranks more better at as high a frequency as possible because the thing is right. So basically I have a bunch of like these are all the same results. I just have them sorted by latency by read speed, by copy speed, and, uh, well, uh, <laughs> let's look at this. So, um, if you go for, like, a high frequency, just, like, high frequency settings, um, for latency, they just suck, right? You get, like, 71.1 uh, nanoseconds. Also, what's really important to keep in mind is if you desync, if your FCLK and your UCLK are not the same frequency, you get a massive latency penalty, Right, 1800, 1800 is 74, but 1800, 1833 is 82. Um, similarly, 1833, 1833 is uh, 74.6, but 1800, 1833 is 82. Like, basically, you don't want to be... Oh, and that's dual rank. And, and actually, on single rank, 1833, 1833 is 72.8. You don't want to run your FCLK desynced with your UCLK. Now, on the flip flip side you also can't like synchronize your uc like if you're uc like if you're running a high memory frequency like say 4266 your uclk is really low so you might be tempted to do what i tried here where it's like yeah let's sync up the fclk to the uclk that way we're not going to have that latency penalty well i don't know if there's still a late like if that latency penalty disappeared because what i do know is that at low fclk clocks like say 1067 uh, 1067, uh, uh, 1067 megahertz performance just sucks in general. Like, it just sucks in general. So that's kind of the thing. If you want good latency, you're going to be running UCLK and FCLK equal. Uh, overall memory system performance does scale with just FCLK clock speed. So you're basically, like, if, if you're overclocking a Ryzen 3rd uh, gen CPU... For, like, memory overclocking, what you're going to want to do, as far as I'm concerned, is you're going to want to, uh, like, you're going to want to get a memory kit that can run relatively high frequency, um, at least 3800 megahertz or higher. Um, that does not mean, mean you need to buy a kit spec'd for 3800 megahertz. You can go and buy, like, a 3200CL14 kit. That'll probably do 3800 megahertz just fine. In fact, all of my dual rank results here are on a 3466CL16 kit from, from Corsair, so... Um, yeah, you know, it's like the, the, like you basically want to buy a kit where you know that it should be capable of hitting up to say 4,000 megahertz. That's, it's kind of the requirement. Um, and then what you're going to do is you're going to loosen out your timings and then you're going to raise your FCLK until it doesn't like, you're going to raise your FCLK and match it at every step with your memory clock speed. And you're just going to run some awful timings. It doesn't matter, right? You're going to fix the timings after you've hit the the frequency limit of your FCLK because some CPUs will go, you know, Silicon Lottery applies to everything and every, every everything and anything. Like, to some extent, it even applies to PCVs for motherboards, though those aren't made out of silicon. But anyway, um, the, the memory controllers are. So you might find that some chips might be able to run like 1933 FCLK. Some chips might not be able to do 1900. I have one chip. And uh, I've not actually stability tested much at all, as you can probably tell from the, the side right here. So I don't know if 1900 is stable on my chip, but it boots and I can do benchmarks on it. So I'm just rolling with 1900 for all of this testing. <coughs> um, so with this chip, probably like for best performance, you're going to want like I want to run 3800 megahertz memory clock and 1900 megahertz FCLK because that way the UCLK syncs up with the FCLK and we don't get a latency penalty and right we, we get these nice latencies right here. Um, now, you know, if I like I did try to push like high frequency and like with decent timings to see if we, we can't bring the latency down to be at least somewhat comparable with uh, the like one to one uh, like UCLK one one to one with MemCLK. 
but it's not possible. It just isn't because it is such a massive latency hit. Like even even 43, 33, 16, 20, 10, 20, 36 is still higher latency at, oh, and that's with tweaked sub timings, whereas this is on all auto sub timings, um, is still higher latency than 3,800 megahertz. Not by much, but it is still higher latency. Um, and if we look at read speeds, we actually kind of see just, you know, more of the same, like dual rank just absolutely dominates the, the top end at 3,800 megahertz tight timings. Um, so yeah, and by dual rank, I mean, this is a two by 16. So that's a 32 gig memory configuration. Also, I'm doing all of this testing on a gigabyte X570 ITX, uh, motherboard, if anybody cares. So yeah, I don't yet have any other X570 boards to test with. I do intend to do some testing on some B450 boards as well as some X470 boards. But uh, yeah, I don't plan to like, I still have tons of X470 boards lying around, but I don't really feel like testing every single one of them because, well, some of them are just not very nice. Like, I don't like working with some of them. So that that's kind of that. Anyway, um, yeah, so dual rank just, you know, for read speed dominates just across the board by here you know good timings on single rank works well as well um high frequency comes in at around here right so basically like the the thing is is like yeah you can you can put a lot of time and effort into getting high frequency to somewhat uh like start catching up to just like lower frequency settings but in my opinion that's just the wrong way to go about it the other issue is that the memory controller on Ryzen 3rd gen, it is a lot better than uh, on um, than on like 2nd gen or 1st gen, but it's still not incredible. It's still not like a coffee-like grade. So basically 4,400 megahertz on Samsung BDI for me, at least with this motherboard and this CPU seems to be the absolute, like seems to be the limit. Um, maybe also we will see some uh, BIOS updates that make higher frequencies possible, but right now, you know, and I didn't put a ton of effort into this, obviously just spent a couple hours doing this, so maybe I need to like tweak the uh, termination resistances and that kind of thing and drive drive strengths and that, that, and maybe I can get even higher frequencies working. But initially, my impression is it's just like not worth the effort because 4,400 megahertz is barely stable at all. Like this regularly doesn't, like if you restart a few times, this doesn't post. So that's not stable at all. It's also not even that fast, right? Um, even even with, like, well, for whatever reason, that's faster than whatever these settings are. So that's fun. Um, 4333, like, okay, so, you know, somewhat actually fast, but still it's like, that's the limit of what the, like kind of the limit of what the motherboard can do. Now, also if I had Micron eDie, then I could probably run higher frequency, but I still don't see why I would do that instead of just running dual rank like seriously because more ram at l lower latency similar throughput why would you run anything else instead right like i'm just not seeing a scenario where you can because you'd basically need to hit like i don't know like five gigahertz memory clock or higher at very tight timings to even begin catching up to something like a 3800 megahertz dual rank configuration that like, isn't even that incredible, right? Like, and here, if we go by copy speeds, this is, like, the only place where 4333, like, where, you know, um, one to two, I mean, two to one UCLK mode actually kind of doesn't completely suck, but it's still worse than dual rank. Even even with, you know, uh, kind of lame timings, it's worse than dual rank, even for copy speed. So it's just, like, I, I don't know why you'd bother with a 2 by 8 Like, if you care about just raw performance, I don't know why you'd bother with a, like, 2 by 8 high-frequency configuration because you get a latency penalty, your read speed isn't really that high, your copy speed really isn't that high, and your write speed, so write speed, at least on, like, a 3700X, which is a which is a single CCX, um, or no, not CCX, but single uh, CCD, so core cluster die, um, that, like, you know, like, the, the, the write speed is basically just a, a UCL, uh, I mean, an FCLK benchmark, right? So you can see, like, 1900 here. They all score the same. So this is not affected by memory settings on the single CCD chips. It's just a... Uh, yeah, like it's literally just a FCLK benchmark, right? So you can see how that correlates right there. There's 1900 and it scores the same as those, right? 
So, yeah, 1833, score like that. So, yeah, um, basically my recommendations for you if, you were bu if you're buying memory and you care about performance for Ryzen 3rd Gen, you're going to be looking at like 3200 CL14 or Micron EDI kits, and you're going to be looking at like, or 34, like you're basically, if you want 2x8, right, capacity, if you want 2x8, you're going to look at 3200 CL14 kits or Micron EDI. And you don't even need incredible Micron EDI. You can just run pretty much any Micron EDI and, and it'll be okay. Now, the thing you need to keep in mind with what Micron EDI compared to BDI is that, to, compared to Samsung BDI, is that Samsung BDI runs tighter TRFC, tighter TRCD, tar, tighter basically everything. Uh, like slightly better timings for basically everything. Whereas EDI is a little bit easier to drive. So EDI actually is easier to clock higher speeds on, but it doesn't do as tight timings. Um, and st so, you know, which is basically irrelevant if you're going to be doing around 3800 megahertz anyway. Um, but potentially for something like a dual rank or a quad rank configuration, that actually gives you an advantage because being easier to run in quad rank is actually kind of a, like th that starts being a sort of like, can the memory controller drive that much, uh, that much memory? So their EDI might have an advantage. So basically, 2x8, you're going to be looking for EDI, like Micron EDI kits and Samsung VDI. Micron EDI is really cheap right now. Um, though you can also go with like Hynix CJR based kits, but I wouldn't like, I'm, well, I, they, they, they are in the right frequency range. I'm just not sure about how they do in terms of timings. So I like, I haven't tested any CJR, but I'd assume CJR doesn't do too badly. Now, if you want to push, you know, two two by sixteen memory configurations, then you're gonna pro like again, it's just Micron EDI or Samsung VDI, and this is probably gonna be the performance sweet spot in terms of like how much money you have to spend, especially for EDI. I think like you can probably find a thirty two like a two by sixteen or a four by eight configuration of EDI for less money than a two by eight high frequency BDI configuration. Cause I know like you can buy like uh, G skill now does a thirty six hundred megahertz uh, CL fourteen memory kit and it's like and it like it's expensive. It's pretty damn expensive and it's just like, well you could instead just buy like thirty two gigs of EDI for probably close to the same price overclock it yourself and probably get maybe even better performance because the, the thing about dual rank is it literally gives you extra performance per clock and per timing actually more mostly per clock because the the whole benefit to dual rank is that if you have multiple memory ranks you can interleave your memory access which means that while one dim is busy doing something like trfc or so, like doing refresh or something you can use the other memory rank, like you can access data from the other memory rank. So yeah, I, I like, like I really need to get more, like I need to get more variety into my memory collection, which is just an eternal struggle for me because it's just like CPUs to buy, motherboards to buy. And then of course there's my endless addiction for old irrelevant graphics cards, uh, which makes it really hard to also buy memory. Um, but yeah, it's like so far, you know, performance wise, I'm going to say you want to go for whatever FCL, like you just, you don't need a 4,000 megahertz plus memory kit. Now that doesn't mean you can't go and buy a 4,000 plus megahertz memory kit because I have noticed that there are now some really like low cost, uh, BDI bins that are like 4,000 CL19 or 4,400 CL19 and they go for relatively low prices. Those are still prob those are probably pretty good options for, for as like memory, as memory kits to buy. Um, because you can still manually tune them to run like 3800, you know, 3800, 14, 15, 8, 15, or what, like whatever timings they can do. Even 16, 16, 16, like doesn't do that badly. Latency wise, you know, it's so incredible, but still better than even like, you know, say like similar timings, but like five, uh, more than 500 megahertz more. And it's just like, yeah, better latency than that. Um, cause of the UCLK to FCLK penalty. So... Yeah, that's that's kind of kind of all there, you know, kind of all all I have to say about uh, sort of memory and FCLK performance scaling on uh, Ryzen third gen is just like don't worry about memory speeds in excess. Like especially like if you actually bought a kit and ran it at four thousand megahertz, you'd probably be getting like the worst memory performance possible. 
Because you're just... Like, because you can kind of make up for the latency hit with, like, really aggressive timings at high frequencies. But it's just, like, if you're running, like, 3866, like, yeah, 3866 or 4000 megahertz or, like, 4133, you're, like, you're just high enough in frequency that your UCLK and FCLK will be out of sync. But you're not high enough to make up for any of the performance penalty. So those are, like, if you're going to run XMP, buy a kit rated for 3600, 3733, or 30... I don't think they make 3800 megahertz rated kits, but if you do find one, that, that's what I would go for. Uh, keep in mind that also the FCLK does not automatically go above 1800 megahertz. So if you buy a kit that's like 3733 uh, XMP and you ac enable the XMP profile, your FCLK will be at 1800 megahertz and you're going to get that lovely latency penalty from the, the different clock speeds on, on the two regions. So... Yeah, you really like, so basically 3600 is like, if you want to just brainlessly enable XMP and go about your day, 3600 is for you. If you want to, like if you're okay with manually configuring the FCLK, you can buy something like a 3733. And if you are willing to put a lot of time and effort into things, you can just kind of buy whatever, right? Like as long as it's Micron e die or a Samsung b die. And, uh, you know, you, you can go for, like, dual rank, you can do go for, like, I really want to test quad rank once, uh, well, I don't have quad rank, like, I don't have a me quad rank memory configuration available to test with, but I'm going to get my hands on that, but, uh, eventually. So, but, uh, yeah, like, if you're on a four dim board, then you can go, go try, like, go for quad rank. If you're on a two dimmer, then, you know, dual rank is going to be the maximum you can run. And, uh, yeah, and the funny thing is, like, yeah, but basically 3600 to 3800 is where you really want to be in terms of pro like frequencies because that's where your FCLK and UCLK can stay synced up and and then just get the timings as low as possible in that range. So that's kind of nicer than like Intel in, in a like tuning wise. It's nicer to deal with this than like Intel where on Intel, like you can go all the way up to like 4800 megahertz quite easily on some other boards. And then it's just like, OK, so. You know, with this set of timings at 4800 megahertz, is that actually better at like th than this set of timings at 4400 megahertz or this set of timings at 4200 megahertz? Or it's just like, no, here it's quite simple. You run 3800 and you run the tightest timings you can, and that's going to give you the best performance. And then once you run out of timing headroom, you just want to start stacking memory ranks on top of that. Um, Whereas, yeah, and, and high frequency, I just wouldn't worry about whatsoever because it, it like, it, it's just not winning any of these configurations, right? Like dual rank just wins everything. And none of these are stable settings, right? Like, well, some of these are probably stable, but the, the high performance settings aren't stable. So yeah, because I've not been testing them because the thing is, if I had to test them, then this would take probably 20 times longer to do all of this. So yeah, that, that, that explains why I don't test memory for every single performance level. Uh, that's why I don't test, like, the stability for every single performance level. But, yeah, so hopefully this gives you some idea of what to look for for, like, optimal memory performance with a Ryzen 3rd Gen CPU. And it's, like, I think this is a good thing because the fact that you still have a relatively low frequency wall means like it doesn't put so much strain on the motherboards which does like I, i'll be like i actually should probably start testing b450 for this because um yeah like i would be very surprised if b450 motherboards weren't able to run like 3800 megahertz even on dual rank like it should not be that hard to run um so yeah, if if B four hundred and fifty boards can do these kinds of kinds of frequencies, then it's just like yeah, I mean you don't even need a high end motherboard, and you can basically get the the best memory configurations possible, um, which you know I think is a good thing. So yeah, that's it for the video. Thanks for watching. Like, share, subscribe. Leave any comments, questions, suggestions down in the uh, comments, questions, suggestions down in the comment section below. And if you'd like to support what I do here with actually hardcore overclocking, I do have a Patreon and also Teespring. So if you want to support me directly, that's the Patreon. There's a link to that down in the description below. And then Teespring is basically like post uh, is for like AHOC stickers, posters, shirts, hoodies, and all kinds like and I, socks as well, I think. And that's I think everything on there. So yeah, and there's a link to that in, down in the description below as well. So yeah, hopefully this was uh, this, this is somewhat useful to people. And um, yeah, thanks for watching and goodbye.